Raw Fuel TV is sponsored by Wheel Sport, your snowmobile, motorcycle, and ATV specialist. Hey everybody, it's Steve from Raw Fuel TV. So today on our XS chassis, we're going to do a quick uh, slide change. Uh, this is going to take us about 10 minutes or so, um, and it's a pretty easy, quick change. I'll show you what to look at, uh, where your wear marks are, and what you should be looking for. Let's get started. So the tools that we're going to use for this install, uh, a silicone lube or any other style of lube like WD-40, something like that. We're going to use the, uh, the back piece of the slide that we cut off. We're going to use that to hammer on the new slides. We've got a 16 millimeter socket with a 16 millimeter uh, wrench, 10 millimeter socket and wrench. We've got a marker, a pair of vice grips, a hammer, and a, a large size Phillips screwdriver. We also used uh, this, uh, this pry tool, we used it as a tool just to simply bang off the old slides with. And then obviously we've got a reciprocating saw and either a buddy or if you don't have a buddy around, get yourself a good vise. You'll use that just to hold your slides. Let's get to the install. So now we're at the front of the skid and if you take a look, this is pretty much a unused or this portion of the slide doesn't get much use on it. And right at this location here, you can see this line. This line is basically your wear mark line. So everything underneath this line is uh, is decent slider and everything well above the line is basically, it's gonna be your rail system. Now, the part where you're gonna find the most wear on all of your sleds is gonna be in between the two front uh, idler wheels or bogey wheels, idler wheels. And right up top, you can see right about here, is our wear mark and right underneath this there isn't a lot of uh, there isn't a lot of slider left now saying that when you put on a brand new set of sliders you're gonna see that over the first probably hour or two that the slider is gonna wear down considerably right in this area right kind of all in along this this front area but then beyond the first hour or two uh, it's going to pretty much stop wearing and it'll stay where it is. You'll only notice significant wear once you, uh, if you're running down the roadway or if, uh, if it's really low snow conditions. So this slider itself is probably going to last a, a period of time but on a five day trip we might as well throw in a new one. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to, uh, we're going to loosen off the track tension and that's going to assist us getting the slides out. So in order to do that, take the caps off both sides and you're going to use your 16 millimeter socket and box and wrench. It doesn't have to be crazy loose, just cut the threads. I'm going to take our 10 mil and we're just going to back this off both about the same amount of turns. Now that the track is loose, we're going to take a large Phillips, get the biggest one that you can, and you're going to end up having going to the front, to the front of the snowmobile. So right at the front of the sled, right at the tip of the slider, you're going to see a, uh, a Phillips screw, and you're going to loosen that off. Just be cautious that you uh, don't lose the nut out of the top here. So if we look through the openings, we can see that the slider is actually a little bit wider than these openings. So what we're going to do is we're going to spray the openings with just a little bit of silicone lube. It'll help the slide uh, slide through this hole. And we're going to use a set of vice grips to do that. We'll see how it works. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take our pry tool. We're just going to stick it into the side of the slide. You can do this with a screwdriver or anything that's kind of sharp and you're just going to take your mallet and you're just going to slowly bang the slide back. Now the slide itself is buried out into the opening you can see it pressed tight against here. So, we're going to take our handy vice grip and we're going to move it out of there. So in the position that the slide is, we're going to want to get a set of vice grips in here. So now that we've got the vice grips in, you're going to get a good firm grip of the slide. You're going to twist the slide sideways and you're going to give it a good yank. And now the slide has come through the opening. All we're going to do is just keep on pulling. And 
And there you go, first slide is out. We're gonna do the same to the other side. Now that we've got the second slide out, we're gonna match up the old slides with the new slides so that we can cut the appropriate length. We're gonna shove them back in. So what we've done here is we've laid out the old slide beside the brand new slide. Uh, and this is very typical that the new slide is longer. Most dealers buy the longer slide uh, so that they only have to buy one basic style and then you just cut it down to whatever uh, length you need. So we've lined the two up, they're about equal length now. When I looked at this slide, I did notice that it was probably about uh, an inch and a half or so short of what it probably could be. So I'm just gonna mark down uh, about an inch and a half uh, longer length on this slide, and then we're gonna cut it at this, uh, at this mark here. Once we've got our mark determined, then we're gonna mark the uh, the brother slide with the exact same mark, that way they're both the same length. So a good point here is that the front of the slide is has the, the hole lift through it, and the back is obviously the other side. Now, if you have a look at the slide here, you'll notice that we this is the back end of the slide, and if you look at the underside of it, you'll actually notice that it is tapered on the back side of the slide. The reason why they have that is when you're reversing, it allows uh, the track to reverse over this seamlessly rather than getting caught on, the, uh, on a sharp edge of the slide. So when we do cut through this, we're going to cut through about halfway through it and then we're going to taper it towards the front. All right, so we're going um, to cut our hash marks. We want to go about halfway through the slide, then we want to angle the uh, blade of our reciprocating saw so that it tapers towards the front. So you can see that it's got a good taper on this one. It's, um, it's ready for reversing. I'm going to take off these nipples and we're good to go. Again, we're going to use the piece that we'd cut off. That's going to be acting as our um, the device to slide to push the slide in. Okay, so same as removal, we're going to spray our hole. We want to make sure that our front with the hole is going in first. We're going to give this just a a quick shot of silicone. Jam the slide in sideways. Turn it 90 degrees. Line it up with the rails and just slide it in by hand. Now we're going to take our mallet and the, uh, and the excess piece of slide, use that to bash it in further. Once the slide comes out of reach for the, uh, for the hammer, insert your spare piece of slide. Same thing, line it up, turn it sideways. And this is going to help us get this slide right onto the, the uh, rail, right up to the tip. So next step, we're going to line up our Phillips bolt, shove it into the hole. And again, the hardest part of this whole process is actually probably to line up the nut onto the Phillips head bolt. Now that we got her lined up, I'm going to tighten her down. And again, the way that the rail system is designed, it's designed to hold this lock nut in place. Therefore, A, you don't need any further locking devices, uh, and B, you don't need to put a wrench onto the nut. We don't want to tank this down crazy tight because it will embed itself deep into the slide, 
and you'll actually uh, lessen its holding ability upon the slide. So just get it in so it's hand tight. Ensure that the bolt itself has sunk beyond flush. And we're done. That was it. So your final step is, is to re-tighten the track. The one thing to, to remember is that when you tighten up this track, the slide is gonna have to work itself in. So you don't want it too tight because you're just gonna A, create a lot of extra heat. You're gonna burn through your slide. Um, but if it's too sloppy, then the, uh, the cogs are gonna jump the track. You're gonna have problems as well. So we're gonna tighten this up uh, equally uh, on both sides. And um, we may have to do a second tightening after the first hour or two of uh, sled use. So the last part of this install, we've set the track tension to where we want it. Now we're going to uh, sink down the 16 millimeter uh, uh, sockets just to tighten up the rear axle. And uh, once we've done that, we're going to throw the, uh, the dust caps on and that's about it. And just like that, we're done replacing our slides. We'll see you out on the trails. If you enjoy these videos, subscribe to our channel, like us on Facebook, or check us out at www.rawfueltv.com.